Aloha, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Good to have you back here again. I hope you enjoyed that cartoon at the beginning. I was just minding my own business one day, scrolling on Instagram, and this message popped up from a guy named Jason Lethko. Uncle underscore mummies underscore cartoons. He's a Disney animator, and he was like, uh, do you mind if I make a cartoon with you in it? And I was like, what do I have to do? And he's like, nothing. And I was like, Yes, go right ahead. And so he came up with that. Can you even believe that? One of my favorite things about this show are the people who want to be involved by creating art or sending me glassware or just going, hey dude, this might be fun for the show too. So rad, totally appreciate it. So you might notice all of the ceramics on the Whitco bar behind me there. Those were all created by Crazy Al. One of the first guys to be carving tiki's and creating ceramics since the beginning of the resurgence in like the mid 90s, something like that. He is one of my oldest friends in the tiki scene and we are gonna be doing a few episodes together. So keep an eye out for that. Next week on the show, we will have the incredible Mr. Justin Scard of Random Lamb. So Justin's coming on the show to talk a little bit about Oceanic Arts, the brand new gigantic book that came out and the big party that the Hula Girls among a bunch of other bands will be performing at as kind of a farewell like an aloha oi to that business. The two gentlemen Bob and Leroy they opened in 1956 and they're calling it after 66 years of being in business creating tropical decor for just about every tiki bar you've ever heard about. So that's the news. This episode is about five things that I've created here in the breezeway. The first one, probably the most obvious and the most important, is the breezeway bar. I built that with my buddy Josh Winderman about seven years ago. We used a ship's hatch for the top. Bamboo Ben sold me this ship's hatch that was like crazy long. It had been used as the bar top in a vintage home tiki bar from all the way back in the 50s. It was so super long that we cut it in the middle, sectioned it, kind of pushed the two pieces together, hollowed out a section in the middle to put a submariner's plaque as a bit of a tribute to my dad's submarine service aboard the SS Kamehameha out of Pearl. The two posts on the sides were created by Leroy Schmaltz of Oceanic Arts. They were the machine carved posts that that were in just about every tiki bar for ever and ever and ever ago. I think the restaurant at the Crown Plaza Hotel in San Diego still has those. The footrest was carved and created by myself as well as uh, any of the other decorative carving on the bar. There's nautical rope that adorns the whole bar. And then in the center is a vintage porthole which houses a Cook Islands tiki carved by Leroy Schmaltz of Oceanic Arts as well as tapa cloth and everything back there. I really kind of went overboard on things that you would never see. Even underneath the bar is tapa cloth. So that's number one of five things that I've created here for the breezeway. The second notable thing has to do with the bar and actually has to do with this bar too. I created two amoeba shaped bases so that the breezeway has a bit of dimension to it. When you have a home tiki bar that is as small as my home tiki bar is, I mean, it's good size, but it's not gigantic like a commercial bar. It's not tiny like it's a, in a small bedroom or something like that, but it is fairly small. And in a small space, you have to figure out how to make the space more interesting. And that might mean creating different levels. You don't want everything the same height. One of my favorite things is that when you go to walk up to either bar, you have to step up onto these planks and it's kind of transportative because you're stepping up onto these wooden planks. It's almost like walking up onto a ship, but I was in here by myself cutting these giant things out with like a jigsaw and a skill saw and all kinds of whatever saws I could use to make it happen. And then I had a giant propane torch and I was toasting them in the breezeway. I mean, everything else was kind of out during that time. I wouldn't recommend doing it. It was just probably a giant fire hazard, but I was treating it like a big Whitco piece. And then I was scrubbing it with a brush. And then you get this real organic looking piece of wood. So that was the second thing that I created for the breezeway. The third thing that I think is notable that I created here for the breezeway to help enhance the environment is this little wall right here. Can you see the wall? So I created those posts for the wall. They were inspired by some stools that Bamboo Ben had made for the breezeway. I kind of used his theory on carving four-sided posts and then integrated it into this wall. I think in the future I'd like to add to that and I keep wanting to do that nautical rigging that you see at the Maikai and further separate this side of the breezeway from that side of the breezeway with a wall that you can see through. 
because I don't want to close it off so that it feels claustrophobic. But yeah, what I did is I drew everything out by hand first and I kind of like created a pattern and then I copied the pattern four times. And then with the top piece, it's all done with a router. And then you torch the whole thing and then you hit it with a grill brush and it really makes it feel organic and aged. Somebody came into my bar one time and was like, it feels like the breezeway has all these little rooms and sections to it. And I think that's a trait of a really compelling tiki bar. I remember in the Bahuka, you would get lost in the Bahuka because it was a maze, a maze of bamboo and fish tanks and all kinds of stuff. And I think that's one of the key qualities of a great home tiki bar. Just like we saw in Ron's last week, there's so much stuff that you can't see it all in one visit. And I think by sectioning off and creating a maze-like ambiance for your home tiki bar, it really helps to accentuate that kind of vibe. So I think the end result was a bit of a nautical feel and also a vintage 1950s, 60s Polynesian pop restaurant kind of vibe. The fourth thing that I created here for my home tiki bar was one of those things that I always wanted, but I couldn't find. And I knew that if I could find it, it would cost me a fortune. My buddy Rick in Massachusetts had recently found a vintage Orchids of Hawaii shell lamp. And I was like, Rick, can you send me pictures of the inside of that thing? And he's like, yeah, dude, no problem. So he took really nice detailed photos of the inside of this thing, kind of how to assemble it. And then I created my own. And it's so funny because I think Rick and I had gone to like damn near one of the best tiki nautical estate sales in existence, I swear. So the estate sale was at a nautical antique store on the Lido Peninsula of Newport Beach. And it's a place I had been and I always admired all of the nautical salvage the guy had come across and saved, but he never wanted to sell anything. Like, and if he did, it was like crazy, crazy prices. And so sadly, uh, tragedy befell him and they had an estate sale. They liquidated the whole place and I was first in line to get into this place. I brought Rick, he couldn't believe what I brought him to. He also couldn't believe that he lived in Massachusetts and that whatever he buy, he had to have to like try to keep it to a minimum so he could drag all the stuff home. The prices were high the first day and then the second day and the third day prices got better and better. And then finally the third day I was out of money because I went every single day. And by the last day there was like a waterproof door like from a ship, a big steel waterproof door and it was only $200 and I should have bought it and I didn't buy it and uh, I think by the last day it might have been $50 or something like something ridiculously low one of those things that you never will come across again and I didn't buy it but that, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about what I did buy though was this it was a barrel full of shells a zillion a zillion of these shells and some huge clam shells too and I think when he was in business, he was selling these things for like five bucks each. I think I got all of these, including the bucket, for like 25 bucks, something like that. Yeah, I still have enough to make a whole nother lamp. Maybe I will. And it had these other shells too, like these weird mollusk looking guys. This thing has a sticker on the back that says product of the Philippines, but really like it's product of the bottom of the ocean, isn't it? No, no. So when I found that bucket of shells, I knew I had to make one of those lamps, like at least try to emulate the Orchids of Hawaii lamp. So I got to work and I started drilling and like wiring each shell. And it was a ton of work, but I gotta say, I am more proud of that lamp than any other lamp that I've made in the breezeway. And I think maybe we should do like a whole feature on the lamps of the breezeway. If you guys wanna see that, leave a message in the comments below because I, uh, I'm i always curious as to what you guys wanna see on this show here. For this episode, the fifth thing that I created for the breezeway is that tiki in the corner. That was the second tiki I ever carved. This is the first tiki that I ever carved and I seriously based it off of a crazy owl tiki. I think the best thing that you can do when you're trying to create tiki art is find your inspiration, emulate it, but I wouldn't turn that into a career because you don't wanna do Bosco's art and then go, yeah, dude, that's that's my art. Or you don't wanna do Whitco art and go, yeah, dude, that's my art because it's derivative and people know. And you know, I've certainly been guilty of that in the past, but I also haven't tried to build a career on doing somebody else's style. So that first tiki, I carved it out of a vintage pier piling uh, with a chainsaw and chisels. It destroyed my chisels. That, that wood is not meant to be carved. In fact, telephone poles, pier pilings, that kind of stuff are usually coated with something and they say that it's really bad for you to cut into them because the sawdust can contain chemicals. So that first one I would say was a good lesson. It was a bit sloppy 
copy. <laughs> and then the second one was kind of my own abstract, like Hawaiian Ku style tiki. I have all kinds of problems with the way that I carve that. Resolving certain angles kind of doesn't work. The legs kind of turn into a mess down at the down at the bottom. I've learned a lot since then, and I'd love to show you some of my more recent carvings. And I mean recent, I mean like seven years ago or something. It takes so long for me to carve a tiki, and I just don't have time. Now when I'm trying to make these videos for you guys, but I love that tiki so much that I wanted to have him as a focal point of the bar. And there's always something special about having your own creations in your own tiki bar. Also, one thing that I would mention is that when we built the water feature over here, we made sure to leave a platform so that you could put a tiki up high. And it basically turned something like a five and a half foot tiki into an eight foot tiki. That was another little pro tip from Bamboo Ben when he built the first version of the breezeway. So I would say that if you have a home tiki bar, if you have any interest in building your own home tiki bar, create stuff for it. Try to construct your own hanging tiki lamp. Try to carve a tiki. Make trim for your walls, make wall decor, make shelves and cabinets. It's so fun, man. And if you can repurpose some old vintage stuff or stuff that people are throwing out and then put tap a cloth on it. The possibilities are endless. If you guys enjoyed this, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you aren't already. And do you want me to do more of these, like things that I created for my own home bar? Because there is so much. I feel like this is almost like an endless uh, discussion that we can have. I mean, it's not endless. Eventually I'm gonna run out of things to talk about, but there are so many things that I created for the breezeway I'd love to share those things with you, but only if you want me to. So leave a message in the comments below. Okay, that's it. Aloha. Aloha. Don't do that.